I want to show you a, a little bit about a bare skeleton, and then we're going to put kind of look at then how you block it in. I'm going to take a look at some um, bare, um, just kind of the the bare minimum that you need to know in order to sketch these things. And once we've got that, um, we will get to work. So bear with me, and this will be a lot of fun. Um, things might get a little bit hairy here, but uh, that's why you came. Um, so this here, yep, that's a skeleton of a bear. Um, were this a grizzly bear, this shoulder blade here would be riding up a little bit higher here, um, and the bump here on the back of the head would be a little bit um, uh, bigger here. The bigger your head, the bigger a bump you want right here. So big head means big bump because there's a ligament that goes from here to the bump that holds your head up. So if you have a big old grizz head, you need a bigger bump to hold that up. So that's part of what's up with the big buffalo hump, the moose hump, the grizzly bear hump. It's a hump right back here in this little spinal, these sort of spinal processes that stick up here on the back of the, of the, of the bear. Um, so when you put fur on top of this. So here is this, the, the, the shaggy part that um, wraps around this. The, uh, the bears have a lot of, of fur. So unlike, say, drawing a horse where you've got this muscle, this muscle, this muscle, this muscle, you're not really seeing muscle by muscle definition on bears because they've got this great shag carpet covering their entire body. But what you do want to notice is that you have shoulder, elbow, wrist, you have hip, knee, heel, toes. And um, so just imagine yourself walking around on all fours. You would be set up exactly this same way. Um, so actually, I'm going to pop out of this view for just a minute. Um, and so I think you can see me right now. Um, I'm going to take this, pull it towards here, turn the screen down so that you are seeing the floor of the room because you are, all right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm the bear, all right? So if you take your own anatomy and you want to be a bear, you have to have four on the floor. Bears are plantigrade, plantigrade animals. So that means that they're walking around in their bare feet, um, with their, bare, their feet basically flat on the ground. Their upper limbs sometimes come up to this position. You see how here my, the heel of my hand is on the ground, here it's up at a little bit of an angle. These carpal bones, right, sometimes the bear holds its foot like this. A lot of times you're going to see them up with the foot in this angle, so up like that. But this is the bear posture. So unlike a deer that is up on its heels, or dogs where you see that heel off the ground, bear, the back feet are flat on the ground, front feet will either be doing that or just like that. So that will help you understand, that helps you understand what is going, going on with those. So here's the bear. When the bear comes up, the bear would be just like me doing this, right? The big, big kind of floppy paws there, the wrist hanging down. This as a big platform, with little claws at the end, so less fingery, more this as, as a big thing. So the uh, <clears throat> bear walks into the bar and says, get me a sarsaparilla and um, some peanuts. And the bartender says, why the big paws? Thank you. I'll be here all week. Um, see, that's really why I came. Um, let's jump back to, oh, thank you. Um, let's jump back to this uh, bear, just the bare bones here. Um, there we go. Um, are, you, uh, are you seeing my bear again? Yes. All right. So there is, there's our bear. And there's our, again, our bear with fur. And when you are, you're, you're seeing this again, you've just got big sections. So a big thigh to a smaller calf foot flat on the ground. You've got a big upper arm 
to a skinnier forearm foot flat on the ground. Or sometimes you'll see this little angle here, right? That is the carpal bones going, going down, all right? Um, when I am sketching these, my general approach is first just to sort of sketch in the sort of the line of the back of the bear. Um, and then I'm thinking about how, how far down is the ground from that back. Um, so I'm going to be dividing this sort of bear box into um, so, so like here's, if, if its back is going to be this long, general proportions, its body is going to be this length, right? And to get these proportions, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm looking at the bear itself. Then I look how far down on that are, is, is its belly. If it's big, shaggy, and, a, and, and has a big tummy, it'll be lower. If it's a really lean bear, it'll be a little bit um, higher. But generally, um, you're going to have what appear to be shorter legs, so not horse length legs here. Here again, I'm just thinking about bear proportions and about how long those, those, those legs are going to be. From there, I'll block in the head, just a big circle for the mass of the head, and I will sometimes attach a little um, truncated cone sticking off the side of that for the, the muzzle of it. So the early part of a sketch, there's no detail. You're just blocking in the, uh, the, the basic shapes. My daughter Amelia is drawing along with me. If you can see um, her work, she's just sort of blocking in those basic bear shapes. From there, what do you see happening with the legs? Um, even though you're usually not going to see sort of the bend of the knee sticking out behind, uh, below the, 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 the body. So just you basically have little peg legs coming out that, um, and you want to kind of space those out on the bottom of your critter. One of the strategies that you're going to find really successful today is looking at negative shapes. So as you're starting to carve in the body of a bear, what I very often do is I look at the shape of the air, say between, you know, underneath its head and, in, and, and by the front leg there. Um, especially on a bear that is backlit, if you're looking at a video feed and it's not, you don't have crisp details, you will always see shapes like this, very, very crisp and clear. And so you can carve and get those shapes. Ones that I'm particularly interested in are what is the negative shape in front, under the head by the front legs, underneath the legs here, often a very useful negative shape. And similarly, on the back of the bear, what angles do you get there? Don't over round your bear. You will often see some really kind of interesting places where there's a turn in the angles of these things. So again, those are what artists call the negative shapes. And what we're doing when we're doing this is we're, we're looking at the shape of the air next to the critter, not the critter itself. So um, if I have, so this will be kind of my initial drawing of a bear will often be something kind of like this. So there's no detail on it, but this is the template on top of which I can draw all that detail. So again, you start off, your target is just getting something like this and you do this really lightly and loosely. And then once you like your proportions, then you're going about the business of blocking in the rest of the bear. Um, if you're working with watercolor, actually, let me just sort of say one other thing about kind of bear fur here. This is a furry bear. There's, there's hair all over the thing. Try to avoid drawing little hair marks over the entire critter. Instead, what works a lot better is to notice where there are some big cracks in the fur and put those in. And then along the edge, use a combination of lines and a few little kind of tick marks, suge suggesting that these are, this is a fluffy bear. So instead of like fur lines going all the way out like this, it's sometimes, it's, it's a bit tempting when you are drawing, let's scoot in here. Um, if, I'm, yeah, um, if, I'm, if I'm drawing a bear, um, sometimes it's tempting to draw, you know, like it's furry. 
right? So you draw these little hair marks all along the thing. And the bear ends up feeling like a porcupine or a pin cushion. Um, so, or a hairball. Um, I don't want to just draw, draw hair, 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 hair. Some places, uh, some places I want a line coming in, and then you can kind of flick a few little kind of tick marks back from that. So you can make a, a line and then just a few little kind of tick marks here and there. And that will feel much more like a hairy thing. The other thing you want to do is notice where the cracks are and draw in those cracks. You're looking at this sort of, you'll see these sort of marks in places where there's deeper fur. This is a great zone for big cracks. Here's a great zone and right back here. In those areas, you will often see, sometimes right in here in the neck, you'll see the same thing, um, some big, uh, sort of deeper cracks in the fur, and you get those in, and that will, those, you see those cracks, and a few of those little tick marks, and people will go like, oh yeah, this is a furry bear. Much better than doing this over the entire surface of the bear. Right. Um, so try to avoid that, um, that kind of overworking the, the hair. If you're using watercolor, what I will often do is I will take a really dark color and I will punch that dark color in on the shadows where the, the, um, where the bear has, has shadows, right? So here in those cracks, notice I'm just getting, this is like some dense black and I'm just popping that in there underneath here where the shadows of the body are. Sometimes that shadow is in on the whole backside of the foot here in those cracks. And then once that's dry, I can paint over that with a lighter black. And what do you know, I now have a, a, a bear with, with cracks in its fur. Um, if I did the light coat first, sometimes I have a hard time figuring out where I did, I drew in all these lines. If you're not worried about losing those, you can do that lighter coat of dark first and then paint those little cracks into it. But if you've done all the work to draw this, you might want to first paint over those to retain their position and then put on your, your, uh, on your bear suit. All right. Um, here, I'm rounding this thing out a little bit more. I wanted it to, to, to look, this, this felt a little bit flat, right? So to round it out a little bit more, I'm adding a little bit more in those shadows. And um, then put in a tiny little hint of texture, a tiny little hint of texture in here. It goes a long, long, long way. Um, so I frayed the tip of my brush and just made a few little kind of things that suggest that there's some fur. The final little step, um, black bears often have a little bit of a bluish gray, a bluish sheen to them. You don't see that on uh, brown bears, but um, sometimes you, uh, black bears can almost look blue as they're reflecting the sky. And a little bit of colored pencil does a lot just to say like, yeah, this is a furry thing. When this entire thing was dry, I hit it with a white colored pencil, lightly, and that just suggests, maybe it's a light blue colored pencil. Um, and that suggests that, yeah, there's just a little bit more fur texture in here, but avoid putting little hair marks over the entire thing. A little goes a long way. And you don't want to kill the picture with too much hair texture. If this were a uh, brown bear, you're gonna have that big bump right up here. Um, the head would be a bit bigger and it might have a little bit more of a, a dish face. We're gonna take a look now at some actual actual uh, brown bears. So um, on this bear, I can get in here, scoot. Um, I am going to just sort of draw a few lines of and point out things that I might do to kind of help me kind of initially frame in this, this bear. So my, my first line would probably be something just like this, I would say like, you know, here is, here's the sort of the line of this bear, right? Um, then I'm saying that it's roughly, roughly we've got a bear that is kind of occupying, here's the, the space of our bear body. 
and about that much of it is body and that much of it is legs. So you see that at the start, there's really little, little detail. I block in a snout roughly in here. And then for the legs, for my initial sketch, all I might probably have could be something like this, you know, where I'm just sort of saying, just sort of general placeholders for, for those feet. On the, when I, then when I go to draw over this with more detail, right, um, what I would be doing is just sort of starting to think of major masses of the body. So I have up in here, this zone here, is my foreleg. So there's a mass of muscles and bone up in here, shoulder blade, all that sort of stuff. There's that section one. Section two would be your belly, which would be through here. And section three is your hip, um, your upper leg down to your heel and, and your foot. So very often I would be keeping my um, you know, on, on a bear drawing, this might be kind of the level of anatomy that I'm looking at. You notice I'm not having to kind of get in here and get all horsey, that like this muscle, this muscle, this muscle, this muscle. Also, I want to point out here that your best friend is going to be negative shapes, all right? I've got a triangle, I've got a rectangle, all right? I, you're looking at these shapes of the air and blocking those in that does a ton to carve your beasties. Isn't this interesting? So here's the wrist, look at this. This is just, this is the whole hand and you're seeing it kind of flopping over as just one big unit. Here's the whole hand flat on the ground. Here's the whole foot flat on the ground. So what you're seeing here is foot, knee would be in here, go to a hip in here and then have a hip bone. So it's just like you walking flat foot on the ground. Um, hold on a second. So let's take a look at another little bear. I picked out several bear drawings because they each show us different sorts of things that I, I, I want to point out. Um, on this one, I chose this photograph because you can see the cracks in the fur really, really well. Um, think about the width of your pencil strokes. You wouldn't want to get in here and try to draw individual hairs. What you'd want to do instead would be to get these, whoops, come back there. There you are. Um, so what you'd, what you'd want to do is to, to get these cracks in the fur, right? These cracks, again, right in there is a great area for seeing them. Often right back here, you'll see good ones. Here you've got some nice cracks in the fur. You get those cracks in the fur and people get a sense of the depth of the fur. Um, and then there'll be a few places, like in, in here I would probably, you know, draw the back of the bear, kind of block it in like this. And then in here kind of just, you know, suggest that there's a little bit of furriness. Come around here, there's a little bit of furriness. And then a little bit of fur kind of Come in here, you can get, it's better than kind of drawing line, 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 line. So you can kind of get an edge with a little bit of fur. This is so cool, these, these, these bumps that stick up, the, that, that classic grizzly bear hump. In here, you can see that there's, 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 there's big kind of, there's, there's a lot of hair and it is sticking up in here. So in this area here, that might be a good place to kind of, you know, kind of, get in there and sort of try to sort of show that this is, this is a bunch of hairs sticking up, but you won't want to try to do that over the entire body. Other things like this, see this little notch in the fur right here? That just does a lot to help people see, they, they see a few of those kind of cracks and things and they go like, oh, this is lovely dark and deep fur, right? The, I, I understand what I'm seeing. So the fur is lovely dark and deep and and I can get a sense of that by your cracks, by these cracks here, 
So I know that generally speaking, we just say no to crack, but here um, you want to you want to really emphasize those because that helps people sort of get a sense of the depth of that fur all over your critter. This one looks a little bit more airbrushed, doesn't it? But on this one, you're going to see, uh, depending on the light conditions out there today, we may be seeing this effect really prominently on our bears. And what I want you to notice is this pale glow around the outside edge of the bear, around the edges of these big zones of this, you know, upper limb here, around the edge of the body here, along here, all along the edge of the bear, you're seeing this glowing edge where the light is hitting these grizzled feathers. So grizzlies are called grizzlies because they have grizzled feathers, feathers? Hmm, interesting. Um, grizzled hairs um, on their body. And those grizzled hairs often may really kind of help you kind of get this, this rim lighting effect that we're seeing on this bear. If you were to see that, the way that you would get that is by um, shading, whoops, come on back bear, um, is the way to, to suggest that is that if you're, my, my, my little, uh, actually I can draw, um, let's see here. So, nope, that's not working. Um, um, so, um, if in this area I am filling it with an area of tone and then have that area of tone not go all the way out to the edge, so in here I might kind of come along here like that, putting in tone, um, so a, a darker value, but leave a zone where I don't hit that. Be doing the same thing here. I would be intentionally leaving these little rim areas where it's clear that this is the edge of the bear, but the shading that you're putting in is going to intentionally stop leaving that margin. So that is something to really look forward and, and try to preserve in your bear drawing. And that will help get you this kind of rim lighting effect that you'll see on a lot of bears. All right, so take a look at the rim lighting here around the top of the head of this bear, around this hump here, right? All around here. That's something that's gonna really kind of give you a sense of, of, of these sort of edges of the bear. So normally we're, we're put, that's where you think like, that's where I'm gonna put in my dark line. But look at this, in these, with this grizzled fur, you get these very, dis, you, it, it's gonna look more berry if you're going to kind of get some of those sorts of, um, of, of, of edges in there. Right. Here what I want to do is start to take a look at that hump on the back and also areas of darks and lights. So this hump on the back, right, this is sticking up really high and notice that, oh, keep doing that to you. Sorry, everybody try to annotate my screen and instead I, right. So what you're gonna want in here is an area of shadow that is going to be just up here in this area. Notice that it is lighter down here below that. So there's an area of shadow up here. And then you get off the hump and it turned brighter. Let me get rid of my little scribble and you can see that really well. So put in some shadow up there and it will suggest that this is more like a shark fin of sort of sticking up in the middle of the bear. And then you get down to the rest of the bear and the, on the body of the bear, there's an angle change there. So where you often see changes in angles, you will also see changes in um, the value because this is catching more shadow than this surface that is pointing more up. So look for when you kind of put your bump in there, very often you can have a little bit of a shadow in there and it's gonna pop that up effectively. All right. Take a look at this in terms of rim lighting. Take a look at this in terms of that little shadow up here. All right. See how that shadow just pops. There's this extra little dark thing with a little bit of rim lighting coming over the top of it. Those two things together are going to carve this moment 
that is very, very, very grizzly bear. Um, <clears throat> these bears here, especially mama, um, is she's much less furred. And so you can see her structure a little bit more clearly. On Back on this bear, it's so shaggy, whoops, back on this bear, uh, she's so shaggy that it's hard to see a lot of detail. When your bear gets really wet or when your bear doesn't have a lot of fur, then you can start to see that underlying structure a little bit better. And what I want to do is just annotate what is going on in here. Um, so up in here, there is a big grizzly bear shoulder blade. And that is going to a grizzly bear elbow right down here. That then goes to the forearm, and it is going then flat-footed across the ground there. In the back arm here, I've got my forearm coming down like this. My wrist is there. These are the, um, the hand bones, the carpal bones, and then to the fingers out like that. So here, you're actually seeing this coming down, and there's a very distinct change in angle, you see that there's like, there's, there's a different thing going on down here. That's right, you're looking at the carpal bones sticking up here. Here that's all done flat foot style, but if you look right here, this little lean forward place, that's the carpal bones out to the little foot. So it's very often you'll see upper arm, lower arm, and then there'll be this extra little section, and you'll see that in the front leg, you don't see that in the back leg. Oh, nice rim lighting, nice little shadow. What a solid animal. Now, when we get to the head of the bear, a couple of things. First of all, um, the bear eyes are very, very small, and they're set into the head right next to where the, the, the snout comes in. So you're going to, whoops, hey, come back. You are going to kind of keep your eyes small, right? And what you're looking at with the snout, so here's the front plane of that. Little bit of kind of bare cheeks coming down, All right? They have a very, very large blocky nose. Look at these sort of inflated nostrils right over here, All right? So there's a very, very large nose. The front surface of that um, turns down, the top surface of that is on the upper surface of the nose. So this part up here, that upper surface, so often you'll get kind of a two-tone effect with this nose because this front surface is down not catching the light and the upper surface up here is catching the light. You may get nostrils in here and in here, which then would be even darker. So a little bit of pouty lips. Right, um, and then tiny little eyes. Rather than just drawing eyes, if you also suggest that the eyes are kind of set into the head around a little kind of um, raised mound of skin here, you can see that that's a sort of the, 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 the motion of those, the hair around there. If you kind of set the eyes into the head with a little bit of, 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 of extra love, so that means not just the eye, but kind of that there's this zone here wrapped up above the eye and a little bit of a zone down below the eye. That will make your eyes feel much less like they're just sort of floating in the ether, right? And that they are um, going to be part of this big um, bare face. And when you look at it from the side, All right. Remember, we said before you have a general uh, a head with a 
box set into it. All right, so that's the general head plan. Here's the middle line, midline of the head. Eyes sit around there. Eyes are close to there. Um, I want to just show you a couple things about the head here that will make your head also really pop in a way that you're going to like. Um, getting this, this nose and muzzle area to work with you, for you, a couple of things. Your mouth is going to come, it comes down up to a slight smile, and then there's a little shadow area there. There's also an area of skin right here that kind of piles up around that. So just like there's a little bit, you know, you, you want that this kind of zone here can really help kind of carve this back corner of the mouth. Right? Um, the front of the nose, you can think of it like a D that then wraps up on the side of the head. Two big nostrils in there. And the slice goes up the side of the D. There's a little slice that kind of from the nostril comes up there. If you're um, looking around where you sort of see both sides of the head, and this eye is just going to maybe just barely visible here, if visible at all. Here's my eye. And again, here is that zone of fur above and below the eye that is going to just sort of help that um, fit that eye into that head. Keep track of the center line of the head. For the ears, Think of a line arcing across part of the head. So from nose to eye, even further back, you get the ear. The ear then tucks in behind that. And for the ear, you're just sort of drawing, you're going to have a, an area of shadow in here. And the rest is just going to be a furry shape. And then there's more head that is behind the ears. So you have this kind of arc across the head, and the ears are going to fit into that. And then you're going to have more head behind it. So it's not, it's not that I have a head and I have that little snout sticking out. And then the ears are sticking up on the back of the head. The ears instead are forward, and there's more head behind those ears. So that is a few little tricks with a sort of things to kind of look for on these bears. What we're about to do is go over to the bear cam. And when we do that, um, uh, the, the bears are going to be hanging out by this, this, this pool. And we, um, we want to, um, we want to spend some quality time with those. We want to get some sketching in with those bears. And, um, hold on, where is my, oh, uh, there's my video. Hi. Um, so we're gonna try some sketching with the bears. When the, you first see the bear, it might feel a little bit overwhelming, like, like oh, I don't even know where to start. Remember, that line of the back, then block in the head, and uh, we'll do that. What you're going to hear me doing when the, I first am seeing the bears is just saying out loud the sorts of things that I notice about them. I have found that when you say out loud the details that you want to end up have showing up, show up in your um, sketch, you say those details out loud, you're much more likely to be able to get those details into your sketch. Um, your brain will hang on to them much better if you verbalize what you're noticing, then you can get it onto paper. Um, so, Mr. Wolf, are, are we able to kind of um, join our, our, our bears at the, uh, the bear pond? We are. We shall head over there right now, I believe. They are having a little pool party at the moment. Oh! Let's make that full screen. There That's we good. go. Oh, this is fun. This is fun. All right, so um, so notice the notice the rim lighting, right? Look that one that's back to us, right? There's that nice rim lighting, 
right? I'm seeing that kind of glowing edge. Um, and here what I'm you know, trying to do, oh, I want to play, but maybe I really don't want to be in that water. Um, the, uh, so, um, okay, look at that. There, look, look, I'm seeing flat across the top of the bed, then the ear is kind of sticking up at the side. I'm seeing sort of darker zone down the middle. I'm seeing clear little rim lighting. Um, and, um, oh, look at this. This is so cool. Uh, we got to feed these bears, people. I'm going to really encourage everybody to donate, feed these bears. <laughs> this is great. Um, so now I'll just start um, seeing if you can get a few lines on paper. Um, what, what can you um, get on paper? Sort of make, make some marks. And if it doesn't like that one that's got its face down, just think of that as a shape. You know, what does a bear look like when it's looking at something underwater? I have no idea, but that bear is actually showing us, right? And so. Bears are attacking. The uh, I I I I wonder if they are, are are being aggressive with each other, or if this is. Um, sometimes the critters can also kind of have a, a play that helps them establish like who's who's the boss bear. Yeah, this is definitely some fun um, sibling play that we're seeing right now. They do this very frequently in the pool, especially during summertime. They show a lot of really fun play behavior. That's sort of where they just open their mouths and generally gape at each other. <laughs> That's definitely more of a play behavior. And if we were there right now, we wouldn't hear many vocalizations. That also would clue you in that it's not real fighting, that it's just kind of play, practice fighting. All right, so I'm... I'm getting, I'm working at my sort of sketches of, 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 of bareback. And so think of it, this is, this is not, this is not, you're not working on a portrait of a bear. Um, what you're trying to do is you're getting, you're you're getting, um, you kind of think of this as as collecting information. You're trying to learn something about bears, bear behavior through your direct observation. And yeah, that's right, Carolyn. This is actually happening right now. So if we were at the Oakland Zoo, this is live what you'd be seeing right at this moment. There are two bears and they're wrestling around in their pool. Oh, look at that bump on the back. Oh, that's cool. And look at the little shadow. See how that shadow shows you the shape of... Uh-oh. Let's try and refresh that. Sorry about that. There we go. Technical difficulties. Oh, that's cool. While we're observing these two bears, I just want to put in a plug for the California Trail section of the Oakland Zoo. We just hit our two year anniversary this past week. This is the section that these brown bears are in right now because brown bears were uh, historically native to this state, even though they are no longer in this area. And if you imagine directly below where we're watching the cameras right now, there is a glass window that you can see partially underwater and partially above the water. So you would get basically to be on the same height as where these bears are watching these play fighting behaviors happen. So definitely highly encourage anybody who's in the area to come visit us starting uh, Wednesday, July 29th. Wait, may I see the glass window? Oh, I, I don't think the camera allows us to see the glass window. But were we to go there and visit these bears, that's what we'd be seeing. 
All right. So what I'm trying to do now is just get several different drawings going from different angles of this 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 bare head, and um, I'm I'm recognizing that it, there's there's it's there's going to be it's going to be funky, um, you know that it's it's keeps moving around. The, but I'm getting a lot of this back angle, right? And so um, you know I'm learning something about the sort of about bareback. Um, Right, so now it's gone back to a pose that it was doing earlier. And, um, and so I've jumped back to a sketch that I started before. Let me see actually if I can, this might work. Oops, okay. Um, yeah. So, so now if you, um, on the side of your screen, oh, look, there's some bareness. Um, all right, so I just made a little line that sort of you know, line of, of, of bare back with a, with a, with a hump. Oh, can we raise the screen up? No, no, the bear's gonna come to us. There you go. So what you're, um, you're gonna notice that whenever the bear moves, you're gonna have this feeling of just like, oh, would you please like come back to that position? I was drawing you in the other position. The bear has no interest in um, doing what is going to make it convenient for your sketch, right? Um, instead, the the bear is is just is just doing bear things. Um, and what you want to do is just sort of oh now I get to go back to this drawing that I started earlier, um, and try each time you kind of you see a pose that you are you know you're working on. Um, try just to notice one little, one little thing, so you can add something to your, 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 your drawing. Oh, that's so cool. Refresh. back in business. And you'll notice that a lot of places, you know, the, 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 the shape of the head is just lost in a shadow. You don't, the camera can't penetrate that shadow. So just draw in that shadow as a shape. Um, Uh, it looks like the fur on that bump on the middle of the back is actually a darker color. Even when it's wet, you're seeing a... Oh, that's neat. And so the snout is longer than I thought it was. I'm going to draw another head here. It's, it's, what I often will do is Nar, nom nom. Yeah. Um, I, I will say out loud things that are little surprises to me. You know, like um, I expected the, I thought that the, um, you know, I, I had in my head a sense of brown bear proportions that had, I mean, look, look at this sketch here. This is, this is a great example of it. Look at this, right? You see that? 
this was my early impression of what the length of that snout was. And you look up there at that bear, it's totally longer than that. But it's not until you start to make your marks on paper that you start to kind of run up against reality. And, and what this is, is iteratively just getting a better sense for bear. You'll slowly get a better, a better sense for, 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 for bear. Um, Oh, that's neat. Jack, we're running a tad low on time, so we have about five minutes left, give or take. So while we we're uh, sort of drawing to a close, I just wanted to know if there were any um, particular parting messages that you wanted to share with our audience today. Um, yeah. Um, so this, you know, what you're looking at, this is amazing, right? I mean, getting to see getting to see these bears kind of out there doing their, 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 their bear thing. Um, and the um, drawing is a really powerful way to just kind of get yourself to pay attention in a manner that we don't normally do. And um, when you do that, you're gonna discover that the world is just so much more varied and beautiful than you uh, than you possibly could have made up. So journaling is about how do we get ourselves to pay attention and to notice the things that we otherwise would not have seen. Um, that could be just an aspect of the of the of the way that light falls through grizzly hair, um, or an inter interaction between um, different animals. It doesn't matter if we get a picture that is a pretty picture or not. Sometimes we do, sometimes we know, don't. And by the way, the more of these that you sketch, the better and better those become. So if this is your you know, first time drawing bears or first time drawing bears in a while, expect um, some of them to be kind of just barely understandable. Um, but the more you work at it, the better and better it becomes. So this is a skill, you can develop this skill. Resources like this, resources like the zoo, um, resources, um, uh, the webcams, and those sorts of things are great opportunities to kind of get, get closer to, to the critters and to see them and appreciate them. Um, also, it's a good place to think about conservation partners. So um, we, um, sort of private citizens scattered around the globe watching um, this, um, to get, you know, each one of us independently can have a, a small impact on conservation through the um, actions that we take. When we work together to protect and preserve things, we're much more effective. And that kind of the, the, the stewardship and conservation can uh, takes place in, in many different ways. Part of it is, is through education, which the zoo does a lot of. Part of it is through um, breeding and reintroduction programs, which zoos are also um, involved with. Um, and consider by supporting these organizations, we together have a larger impact in supporting conservation. And um, want to encourage people, if you are able to, um, at this time, to 
to to support organizations like the Oakland Oakland, Oakland Zoo um, and see what we can do to help them with their animal husbandry and um, conservation stewardship missions. Um, I think that in uh, uh, Elizabeth just put in the, the, the chat a little link for donating to them. Again, many of us are not able to do that at this crazy COVID time. Um, but if you are, it makes a big uh, a difference to them and their ability to continue with their education and, and, and stewardship work. Um, if you're not able to, um, what we would love for you to do is just in the communities that you live and, 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 and work in to find ways to extend kindness to other people, people outside just the sphere of the people that you normally help? Is there a way that you can um, extend kindness in a way that you otherwise might not? And if our work through nature journaling gives us a little bit of a motivation to just be nicer people, the world just became a better place. So um, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much to the Oakland Museum for making this webcam accessible to us and organizing this event. I'm really uh, delighted and honored to be here um, uh, and, uh, and be a part of that. Hey, welcome from, from to Australia. Um, Alex, we've got people kind of tuning in from uh, all over the place. That's really That's fun. That's fantastic. Um, but yeah, thank you all for being here. And also like in your own, um, in your own region, there are other organizations that are also working together. So the work of nature stewardship and conservation hasn't stopped because of, of, of COVID. Um, and where we are able to, um, getting in there together and supporting and encouraging that work, we can have a really big uh, impact and now's a very good time to do that. So thank you everybody. I really hope that you enjoyed this. Um, so Mr. Wolf from the, that really is his name, isn't that cool? Guy working at the zoo, Mr. Wolf. I added um, an extra F just to make it a little bit easier to differentiate. <laughs> That's right. Um, um, do, do, uh, any uh, c closing message or thoughts from the zoo? Yes, absolutely. I want to echo what Jack said. You all were so wonderful for joining us today, and I hope you had a good time. And Jack, thank you. Uh, I certainly learned a ton, and I am going to... I'm certainly more motivated to do more nature journaling, uh, even though this is the industry I'm in. Just this little one hour has reinvigorated that aspect of uh, my practice, so I appreciate that. Um, for those of you who are able, um, the URL for donating to the zoo is in the chat, but I can also say it verbally. Um, you can just go to oaklandzoo.org slash animal care fund. Um, and I also recommend checking out Jack's website, johnmuirlaws.com, to look at literally hundreds of hours of uh, free drawing tutorials. So if you liked what you saw today, you have uh, virtually endless resources to continue doing that. And hopefully we'll see you starting uh, on Wednesday, July 29th at the zoo when we are finally able to reopen. Great. Absolutely, we will. All right, I will see you there. Take All care, right. everybody. Good. Be Bye, safe, everybody. be kind, keep sketching. Ray, looking forward to seeing your journal the next time we meet. Right, Ray Bonto and uh, all of our friends out there, Thank you very much and uh, take care of yourself, everybody.